Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Second upload of the day. Didn't plan on doing one, but we have got so much to discuss from Emerson Royale joining AC Milan, Muniz links, Troy Parrott leaving, Bergval updates, a Shakhtar Donetsk midfielder is being linked. So make sure you go down. As always, smash a like on the video. The last three videos, we've hit seven, eight, and 900 likes. So big up to every single one of you watching. Make sure you have subscribed. As I've said in the last two videos, more than 58% of everyone who watches this channel is not subscribed. So make sure you do subscribe and get the post notification bell on. And if we get it 650 likes, that would be absolutely fantastic. Now, Fabrizio Romano, the most reliable of the most reliable, comes out. And he has said, and I quote, um, not entirely sure what that was about, but there we go. We're back. I don't know why his little tag come up. It says, AC Milan keep working on new right back and Emerson Royale remains a strong option al alongside Thiago Santos. I understand Emerson wants to move and he's keen on joining Milan. No issues or personal terms. Told Tottenham want around 20 million euros to sell Royale. It's up to the clubs. Now, this got me thinking. I've been I've been saying this. Um, I've said this to Sean a number of times when we've been doing our streams that the likelihood is fullbacks in the Tottenham transfer window is going to be a very busy part of our team because Ryan Session Young's been told his contract's not going to be extended. Sergio Regulon, the likelihood is he will leave. Emerson Royale, as we've just been told from Fabrizio Romano, that AC Milan are interested in personal terms, is not going to be a problem. Jed Spence is wanted by Girona, and we've, we've, we've been told from Fabrizio Romano that that move could happen as well. So, which leaves us down to Pedro Porro and leaves us down to Udogi. This is why I've been banging the drum. Go and get Alfie Dowerty from Luton as the left back and promote one of the academy players for the right back. But just on Emerson Royale, you know, I don't think Emerson Royale is a terrible football. I don't think he's horrendous. I do think we can improve in that area, but I do feel at times the criticism is just a little bit overboard. Transfer market value at 18 million euros. Of course, he can play right back and right wing back. Um, we've seen him play centre back. We've even seen him play left back in a Spurs shirt, you know. He is wanted by uh, Al Nasir as well, Cristiano Ronaldo's team in Saudi Arabia. But the likelihood is AC Milan at the moment are the favourites to sign him. His contract expires June 30th, 2026. So he's still got two years left on it. You know, 25 years of age. I do think in terms of for Emerson Royale and Tottenham, this move does make sense. You know, 20 million euros for me is a, is a good fee. That's about, what, 17 million pounds. You could, you could potentially bring in Alvi Dowerty to cover the left back for around 20 million and then probably promote one of the academy players or look for a, you know, a homegrown talent. You know, in terms of Emerson Royale, I think he will go. I've been saying this for a number of months. You know, Tottenham now need to focus on getting rid of a lot of the deadwood. And I'm not necessarily saying that Royale is deadwood, but he kind of comes under that list of players that are up for sale. And we've heard that the likes of Giovanni Lo Celso, Hoiberg, Regulon, Davis, Ndombele, Oli Skip is, is, is another one that we spoke about yesterday that is potentially looking to leave. So when Fabrizio Romano was coming out saying we're going to be very, very busy, he was absolutely bang on the money as always. I expect a very, very, very busy transfer window for Spurs in terms of both incomings and outgoings. You know, it's currently... The 3rd of June, the transfer window opens on around the 14th of June. By then, the Euros would have started. As I've been saying on this channel and Henry Talks Football, make sure you get over and subscribe, subscribe to that. The Euros and these international tournaments like the Copa America sometimes is the worst thing to happen to these clubs because two or three performances, all of a sudden, the, the club that's selling a player can add on an extra 5 to 10% to his value and all of a sudden you're paying an extra £10 million just based off his international performances at international competitions. So in terms of Royale, I do think he will go. And I think 20 million euros, around 17 million pounds for the likes of Royale is a relatively good signing. Now, 
in today's video this morning, make sure you go and check that out. Um, we spoke about a number of different things regarding Eze. Today, Ali Gold has come out and said AZ Alkmaar are interested in signing Troy Parrott. Now, interesting one for me because Troy Parrott has had his best goal-scoring season in his career um, for Rotterdam in the Eredivisie. And I think he's got 18 goal contributions you know, this season, which is a relatively good return for him. And I'll be honest, I don't think his dream of making it to the first team at Tottenham looks like it's going to materialize anytime soon. I look at it right now and think if we were to get a 10 or 12 million euros right now, that probably makes a lot of sense. A lot of that money will go towards FFP because he's a, he's a homegrown player. And we really need to kind of understand what we're doing with a lot of these forwards. You know, Dane Scarlett is another one. What's going to happen with his future? You know, Brian Hill and, and Manuel Solomon look like they're going to be leaving. Santiago, the 22-year-old Spanish player from the academy. You know, the, these players are on the cusp of being on that pathway towards the first team. But you get to a point where you're not necessarily at the level of the first team right now, but you are not necessarily good enough to play in other leagues. So we've got to be very clever when it comes to managing these loan spells because Oli Skip right now probably could go and start a, a lower-end Premier League club, maybe a Southampton, maybe a Leicester, maybe a, I would have said Burnley of last season. But the problem is because he's homegrown, if we do sell the likes of Oli Skip, we effectively have to promote someone or bring someone else back in. The same with Ryan Sessegnon and Jed Spence going, you know. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with, with this big kind of clear out. In terms of Troy Parrott, though, I do think we should we should sell him um, just for his own good. I think it will be more beneficial for him to to get more game time in a in a league which is a little bit less quality. It's a lot less pace. He's only 22 and has got eight goals and two assists in his last eight games. So he is a man in form. Um, there's no there's no question about that. But does that form translate into a Premier League starting position or into our Premier League squad? You know, we've got the likes of Richarlison that can play there. Kulu's played in the number nine. Timo Werner's played in the number nine. Human Son. And of course, we are linked to a striker. So I don't think that Troy Parrott, by any stretch of the imagination, is going to come back to Tottenham and, and, and succeed. Now, Tottenham Tears have put out something as well as the Spurs Express that Chelsea and Tottenham have made contact over a possible move for Rodrigo Muniz. Speaking of the striker situation now, Rodrigo Muniz had a very good end to the season with Fulham. You know, he was involved with a lot of their win. I think he scored twice against us um, when they, they beat us 3-0 at Craven Cottage. Nine Premier League goals in 26 games with one assist. Contract expires. June 30th, 2026, obviously an out-and-out out number nine. There's one. There's an option to extend that contract for one more year, but something that's very, very interesting that I've just read up is he is part of the CAA Base Limited, and a lot of the players that we are being linked to, especially in the Premier League, all seem to be CAA Base Limited, like the likes of Eze, like the likes of now Muniz, and there was another midfielder we were looking at as well. You know, Rodrigo Meniz, if you look at his actual numbers um, in a Fulham shirt, I don't think nine Premier League goals is a is a bad return by any stretch of the imagination. You're probably looking at a similar goal scoring level to someone probably like Richarlison. You know, his stats for me aren't aren't the best. He's linked to the likes of he's compared to the likes of Chris Wood at Forest, Josselu for Real Madrid. Dominic Calvert-Lewin from Everton. His defensive stats are absolutely incredible. He's a beast in the air. Top 10% of all the players in Europe based on 1,600 minutes. Touch in the, in the penalty area is very good. But then when you look at his passing stats, in terms of his passes received, passes uh, attempted, pass completion rate, they are absolutely diabolical. You know, He's in the bottom 2% of all the passes attempted of, of the players in the top five leagues. Pass completion rate is at 61%. Pass, 
Progressive policies in the bottom, you know, 18%. Progressive carries, bottom 8%. Successful take-ons, bottom 7%. Now, of course, stats don't necessarily, they're not the be and all end of thing. You've obviously got the eye test. Someone that had very good stats um, in the air, but not the best stats on the ball is someone like Radu Dragusin. Now, we've seen that at times stats are only um, like a, a portion of it. They're not the whole 100%, but it's important to look at his numbers and just think, Fulham play a very different system to us. Fulham play a system where they are relying on the counter-attack with the pace of the likes of Nico Dover reed Adama Traore, William Muniz. It, it, does that translate into a possession-based team? Now, in terms of his better stats, he's in the top 10% for touches in the attacking penalty area and the top 6% in total shots. You know, he was Fulham's probably one of their better players towards the end of the season. I don't think, as it stands right now, that's the sort of player we should be looking to, to sign. I think we need a player that's got more of a 20 goal a season pedigree, eight in all comps. You know, someone like a Dominic Solanke for me makes a lot more sense. And Ivan Tony for me, everyone knows my feelings about that. I think he will be an, as a statement of intent um, from Tottenham if we were to go out and sign a an Ivan Tony. Now, one player that has been linked to the move and Football London come out with it, I believe it was yesterday or it might have even been earlier today, uh, Tottenham want to sign Mudrick's best friend. They want to come out and sign him. He's a Ukrainian midfielder, currently plays for Shakhtar Donetsk. I will bring his name up in one moment. And that name is Huroy Sudakov. Now, Tottenham and Chelsea are being heavily linked with this guy. Um, like I said, he is Mikhailo Mudrik's close friend. 23 games in the Ukrainian league, six goals, four assists, can play a number of positions throughout his career. But this season has been predominantly an attacking midfield option. Um, for me, 38 goal contributions in 101 games is, is, a, is a good return. I do think Eze, for me, is, is a much, much, much better option. Um Interesting about him, one thing that does stand out is he could be available for an, a ridiculous fee of about 50 million, which I don't think we are going to trigger that option in, in, in signing him. But he's very, very versatile. You know, contract expires June 30th, uh, sorry, December 30th, 2028. Now, when you look at these stats, um, the stats on the attacking side of things are very, very good. Now, he's defensive stats, he's a number 10, so you wouldn't expect anything else. But these are, I mean, aerial jewels one. He's, he's in the bottom 1%. Passing stats, very good. You know, attacking stats is relatively good. But the fact that he that assisting stat for me is why we should stay well clear. If you're supposed to be the number 10, you're supposed to be the creative source, and you're in the bottom 9% for number 10s, not, not, not for me. Um, I think that's just a. I think he's got the same agent as um, the likes of Mikhailo Mudrik. He's 21 years of age. Stats throughout his career, though, are relatively good. You know, come through Shakhtar Donetsk's academy. Three goal contributions in the Champions League in 14 games, which isn't bad because then he plays for Shakhtar. I, but I do think that is one that, that Mikhailo Mudrik's agent is probably trying to force. Um, and I do think that won't happen. I'm going to be um, com completely honest on that. I, I, I don't think that'll happen. In terms of Muniz and in terms of Troy Parrott, Muniz, you know, I, I don't necessarily say you can say he's Premier League proven. I think he's only had one or two seasons in the Premier League and his top season is nine goals. Let me know your thoughts on that. Do we go in and, and, and pay the, um, the? I think he's probably going to be £25 million pounds for him. Or do we 
potentially look at someone else. Another striker that we need to come to the bottom of his future is Ilejo Veliz. Now, Ilejo Veliz, for me, went out on loan spell probably to the wrong sort of league. He went out on loan to Sevilla, 20 years of age. Um, he played six games in his loan spell. He's not a notorious, you know, out and out goal scorer, other than his kind of time at CA Rosiaro Central, where he got 19 goals and two assists in 63 games. But we do need to come to the bottom of what we've got so many different strikers with Parrot, Richarlison, Viliz. You know, we're linked to, uh, to Miniz. You've got Son that can play there, Werner that can play there, Kulu that can play there. But one thing we don't have is a killer in the number nine role. Veliz, I think if we are going to loan him out, again, it has to be to a championship level club. That for me is what we need to do. Loan him out to a championship club and see how he gets on. Because right now, I don't think as of the 3rd of June, he is anywhere near Tottenham's level. I think other players out there are better, more Premier League proven, have more to their game. I mean, uh, other than his aerial ability, I don't really know too much what we could do. Um, there is another report that Santiago Jimenez says yes to. Now, for me, if that is 100% legit, th these aren't, it's not the most reliable source, but right now it is trending. If, that is legit, and that's coming out from Team Talk, that Tottenham have seemingly been given the green light to sign Santiago Jimenez this summer with the reports that the native Mexico revealing the final striker is set to opt to remove to London. There's interest from Southampton, AC Milan, Liverpool, and Chelsea. If we bring in Santiago Jimenez, you know, as I said earlier, that league is very up and down. If the price is right, then I guess there isn't too much of a downside, but we have to be wary that the likes of Victor Janssen smashed the life out of that league. Cody Gakpo smashed the life out of that league. Both of them haven't really done too much in the Premier League. Bergwijn was brilliant in that league. Anthony was brilliant in that league. They've come to the Premier League and all of a sudden there's, there's big, big question marks. Ryan Gravenberch destroyed it at Ajax, gone to Liverpool. And there's a few questions, but... Santiago Jimenez, for me, um, when you look at his stats, they are absolutely insane. 29 goal, goal contributions in 30 games. You know, his attacking stats are, I think he's in the top 1% of strikers um, for attacking stats in Europe. They are absolutely ridiculous. Top 2% for non-penalty goals, top 1% for non-penalty XG, top 4% for total shots, top 3%, top 7% for assists. Um, expected goals is top 7%. They are absolutely ridiculous. His, his pass attempts, his pass completion, aggressive passes aren't, aren't great. But the, the, the other stats are absolutely ridiculous. Now, aerial duels for me is a, is quite an important stat. Um, I know it's a defensive stat, but it's still a very important stat for a striker. If the price is right, I don't think there's too much downside. Um, then, look... If the price is right, go and get him. Simple as that. It's a very unproven league when it comes to signing players into England. But I do think he could be a massive, massive signing. Let me know your thoughts down below on Jimenez, Royale, Parrot. So much to get through. Smash them likes and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.